Hello and welcome to another Jay's Politics Podcast, part of the Podcast 99 Internet Radio Network. You can reach us at podcast99.org or me directly at jpoliticspodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter at jpolypodcast. This is This Week in U.S. Politics, episode number 22. And today we're going to be discussing the uh, protection for Portland at a dual, at a dual rally this weekend on Saturday. And I'm really ashamed that we actually have to come to this as a society where we have to have militant police checkpoints at a festival in a town, in a progressive town like this. So I just, I can't figure it out why we are, why we are so, um, How do I want to put it? Why we are so incapable of... um, Why we're so incapable of being able to protest peacefully, protest as a... as a society, both for and against peacefully. Why do we have to have our police... Set to look like, and of course I don't have a picture because I don't want to play their ad. But let's see if I can. Um, basically, I just don't. I don't see why our police have to be dressed up in full rank here and SWAT at protests to deal with the protests. I'm uh, going to be using CNN as a source. I know CNN is very biased. But at the same time, I think that this proves what I'm really trying to get at is this right here. And as you can... As you can see here, look at this. The police should not have to be out in full force like this, wearing full gear. At all. Now, this is happening live at the time when I was setting up the the stream for this. What on earth is our society doing? What on earth are we allowing this to happen for? Oh, come on, yeah. No, I don't want to play. All right. Now, this was updated last. Um, I refreshed it just a little while ago. It was last updated at 7.34 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 7 or 4.37 local time here in Washington. Police in, tents, police in tents downtown Portland on Saturday ordered protesters to disperse and leave a location where they saw people throwing projectiles, including rocks and bottles. Quote, Failure to comply with this order may subject you to arrest or citation, and you may be subject to the use of riot control agents or impact weapons, quote. Police said on Twitter and on loudspeaker at the scene. This came as dueling political rallies took place and police braced for potential violence. If you'll remember last year, they actually had this, they had a similar event happen where Antifa, Portland's Antifa wing, showed up at a rally and started beating up on people, damaging property. And the grounds for the progressive side of politics for this is that they're there to punch Nazis and they're to to stop the spread of Nazism. Just because we, just because people uh, are to the right of your beliefs does not make them all right. Does not make them, the boogeyman that you make them out to be. When it comes to when it comes to the the polit the political spectrum, there is more than one side. 
and not one side is right on every single issue. What I mean by that is there are conservative values, there are conservative points in politics that are just as much valid as any progressive or liberal stance on a topic as well. You know, we should be a fiscally conservative country. We should not be spending our money willy-nilly on whatever suits us. But at the same time, we should also be progressive enough to take care of our own people as well. You know, I'm not saying handouts for everybody, but at the same time, we should be helping those that are in need. Um, one thing that I think, one progressive program that I think we should have is a, you know, a healthcare system for all. Not that everybody, um, not that everybody agrees with me, but something along the lines of an NHS that the U that the UK uses. I know, um, I know there are people for and against that, and it's fine. That's the whole point of political discussion, is to take an issue, present your sides, present your facts, discuss it, and come up with a solution that either works for everybody or doesn't work and move on until you can figure out something that does work. But This came as... Oh, uh, wait, there we go. Oh, I forgot that. They told people not to bring weapons and warned that the checkpoints and bombs that the... Wow. Whoever wrote this did not <laughs> write it very well. They told people not to bring weapons and warned that checkpoints and bomb-sniffing dogs would be on hand. Members of law enforcement who wore heavy armor on the streets ran towards protesters and continued to move them further away from the location where flashbang grenades were deployed. A CNN affiliate live signal from the ground shows. Quote, we aren't here to fight the police, quote, end quote, a protester yelled. We're, quote, we're here to fight the Trump supporters. That right there is not a reason to fight. Not to, to come to physical violence, not to have physical contact with people. Why should you be throwing anything at them? Why should you be punching them? I go back to the to the Trump inauguration where I don't care for him, but Richard Spencer gets sucker punched very weakly, I might add, by a member of Antifa. Come on now. That is not that is not what political discourse is about. People are trying to equate Trump to the way the South... People are trying to to equate the Trump election as a dividing... As a dividing... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? As a dividing cause of our nation. As it is the reason for our division. And it's not. It's the, the fact that our political spectrum... Our politicians are being pulled to the extremes that we're losing ground. Just to go back into our own history, the last time we had, quote unquote, had a president this divisive was Abraham Lincoln, that I can recall, where we actually split the nation and went to civil war. I don't know how it would work out today, but if we were to split the nation again into civil war, I know where I would be headed. I would leave if if I think how it would work, the progressive states against the conservative states, and I'm not even conservative, I would go to the conservative states and defend the U.S. But, you know, it's what it is. Uh, the last updated section, a rally draws opposition. The group Patriot Prayer U.S. reportedly planned to hold a rally that drew opposition. Large groups of protesters and counter-protesters gathered on opposite sides of a downtown street waving signs and banners. People on both sides were hurling insults at each other. Demonstrators on one side chanted, USA, USA, 
and said the Pledge of Allegiance, while the other side countered with a chant that included the line, Fascist Retreat. I don't think, I don't think the honest, honestly, the progressive left has ever seen a true fascist in their lives. I, I honestly don't. the The fact the progressive left has used terms like fascist, racist, misogynist, so much to the point that it's deadened the use of the words. It's deadened the insult that those words had. If if I were to walk into a room with my black coworker, who I consider a friend, who's a Haitian immigrant, and him and I have discussed politics, and you know, while he knows some of his history, since he does have his green card to be here, he doesn't know it all. Um, talking about the book series and the TV series Roots with him. I was discussing with him how Roots was, when it first came out in the 70s, was very powerful, very groundbreaking story that was told. And that the story of Kunta Kinte, Toby, was told in a way that made it have an impact on me when I watched it as a middle schooler. It still has an impact on me today, and I would rather watch the 70s version than the new one that came out by, I think, the History Channel. But anyways, jokingly, he's like, oh, you guys going to call me Toby now? I'm like, no, no, because, you know, that would be a racist thing to say. But if, But if he told me it's okay, and then I walk into a room where he's at and I call him, hey, Toby. Immediately, anybody inside that room that did not know the context of our friendship, that did not know the context of our working relationship, would immediately call me a racist. And before that, I'd even have a chance to defend myself, or he would have a chance to defend myself. I would be under attack. Just a few years ago, that would have actually meant something to me. I actually would have been offended. But now, what? But now, I cannot be offended by that. It does not bother me as much as it as it could have. Quote there. Um, next paragraph. Quote: There will be a, a significant law enforcement presence in the area of the demonstration due to past threats and acts of violence. End quote. An online statement from the Portland Bureau Police Bureau said earlier. Quote: Persons attending any of the events should not bring any weapons or items that can be used as weapons to any of these events. And the police, Portland police show these things. They also, I like how they've thrown the Confederate flag. And when I mean Confederate flag, I mean the battle flag of Virginia. Lines of police wearing protective helmets and vests kept the two sides separated. When members of both groups began marching, Police used yet loudspeakers to order people to stay off the streets and walk on the sidewalks. The rallies and march marches were taking place downtown in the Tom McCall Waterfront Park. Although the sides were separated, live video feed from CNN affiliate Coin K O I N showed some people managed to mingle with their opponents and attempt conversations on topics such as immigration, free speech, and patriotism. Most of the discussions appeared tense or heated but there was no violence. That I can agree with. That I can be just fine with. I don't know about the rest of you, but honestly, I think that it is perfectly acceptable for, for us to allow... I think it's perfectly acceptable for us to allow conversations to happen in our cities in our states about these topics the whole point my whole point about freedom of speech is that it's not it's not an issue of whether or not we're allowed to discuss things 
or what topics should be off limits, what topics are um, what topics are off limits, what topics are not off limits. It's about that everything should be allowed. Everything should be okay for us to talk about. It, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, even if you're offended by it, doesn't mean that we shouldn't be able to talk and discuss a topic. But people don't under people. Some people just don't understand that on both sides of it, both sides, the far right or no far right and the far left, they don't understand that free speech is something that should be allowed in any democratic or democratic republic society that we that the Western world uses. The organizer of Patriot Prayer, Joey Gibson, has described his ideology as libertarian, not alt-right. The two sides have clashed in Portland before, known for its strong liberal politics. Another tweet from the Portland Police. Portland Police Bureau reminds public that Oregon has no concealed handgun license reciprocity with any state, and it is a crime to carry a concealed handgun unless you have and present for inspection a valid Oregon concealed weapons license. And just remember that for those of you that do own guns, if you come to Portland, make sure you have and you want to conceal, make sure you apply for the Oregon concealed weapons permits or license before you go there. Four purpose, four people were arrested early in June when the, when Patriot prayer held a, quote, Freedom March, end quote, downtown, and a counter-rally was held in the same area. That, the competing demonstrations escalated to fights and people throwing fireworks, rocks, and bottles at each other. And honestly, when it comes to the free speech, when it comes to free speech in our society, it's slowly but surely trying to be eroded away by the far left and the far right, like I said before. They don't want us to they don't want us to be able to have civil discussions. They don't want us to be able to sit down and discuss topics like you know racism in a civil manner. Yes, those discussions will be heated. Yes, somebody or both parties will leave with their feelings hurt. But that's fine. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. Yet you, yet we sit here and act like we have to cater to making people feel it's okay to discuss these. Or <clears throat> that it's okay for the people to say, oh, my feelings are hurt and we shouldn't talk about this. Well, that's BS in my opinion. But what I want to know, what I want to discuss about free speech is that it's either an all or nothing thing. Either we have the freedom to speech on any and all topics or we have just pure censorship. And as soon as we start getting to the pure censorship, we're going to basically start having a world where we're going to have new speak where words are going to be taken away from us to be able to coherently speak on a topic. We're going to cater to those whose feelings get hurt over a simple matter, over a simple topic that nobody should have their feelings hurt over. In a sense that nobody should have their feelings hurt in, in that manner because of the way somebody discusses a topic. You know, I often compare my, you know, compare my relationships at work and relationships with um, friends, the Navy. You know, we can talk all we want about. We can talk all we want about topics in the Navy, and if somebody gets hurt, that gets their feelings hurt, it's. TS, you know, tough shit because you know what? You're just going to have to deal with it. 
But at the same time, but at the same time, we have to, how do I want to put this? We have to acknowledge that, that these topics can be sensitive to people. You don't have to give out, you know, so much trigger warnings. Apparently there's, I heard somewhere, I want to say it was today on the radio or on the news, something about how tr how trigger warning, there's a study of how using trigger warnings, you know, quote, trigger warnings at the beginning of a post or anything like that, heightens the anxiety of the person who's reading it, which does not help them out at all. I don't have access to the study. I haven't. I don't remember where I heard it and I haven't had a chance to go digging for the study. But if that is a true study, if it is factual, then why continue putting out trigger warning on a topic? You know, free speech is free speech is something that I fought for in the military and I still will fight for to this day. I may not agree with you. I may not like what you're talking about. Example, the alt-right, the Nazi, the neo-Nazi groups, the KKK, the social justice warriors calling everybody racist. I don't agree with any of your points of view. I don't agree with anything you guys have to say on the most part. But I will fight for your right to say those things. I will fight for your right to be able to openly have that discussion with anybody you want. But at the same time, you need to respect that I have the same right to do that. I have the right to have my platform and have the right to be heard, whether it be here on YouTube or an event that I pay for myself. You know, if I were to go out on public speaking tours, like some other people have in the that are popular YouTubers, I should expect the I should expect that if I pay a place to if I run out of place to say, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, are you willing to host me for an a live discussion? If they say yes, they should not count kowtow to anybody who's trying to deplatform me. Especially if they've taken my money. If they take my money and don't refund it back, if they do deplatform me. That's BS as well. Not saying that anybody's done that because I haven't tried to go on any sort of public speaking tour. But I just find it, I find it interesting that we are sitting here, and I'm not trying to use current year, you know, current year as the as the example here. But I'm I'm really surprised that you know that our Society has to fight to maintain its free speech. We have to fight to keep our ability to have the right to speak our mind. Our media biases, CNN, MSNBC, you know, ABC, NBC in general, are all left-leaning liberal media groups. You have Sinclair Media Group that is owned by conservatives. Sometimes they speak a conservative message. Sometimes they speak a liberal message or even a progressive message. Just depends on the story. But you have Fox News that speaks a conservative message. We, the people, have to demand from our media groups to present us the truth. I don't care about the bias that you have. I don't care about the narrative you have. But you need to as a whole, pull your collective heads out of your butts and tell me the truth, not what you want me to think, just the absolute facts. I don't want to, I don't want to have to be told what to think. I should be able to be presented the information and allowed to make my decision. It's because we don't teach the critical thinking enough in our society. I won't say schools. I'll say society. We don't teach each other to think critically. We don't 
have our children grow up and understand that we need to, you know, here's your problem, child. You can either have your cookies and be, you know, eat all the cookies you want and, and get sick, or you can eat a healthy dinner and then have cookies later for a snack or dessert, you know, things like that. We need to teach our children as they grow up the critical thinking skills. If you do A, B happens, but if you do C, D happens. That's the type of mentality that we're missing in our society. You know, you get a lot of people in the, um, you get some people um, that just claim to be enlightened, claim to be woke. I hate that term. They they claim to be knowledgeable about a topic, but when you talk when you try to talk to them in civil terms, it becomes a bashing, it becomes a beating of it becomes a beating down without discussing the actual merits of the argument. You know, and it's not just you know, people like Baring, Sargon of Cod with the social justice types. I've brought up that, you know, collectivism doesn't work, you know, and people bring up the Native American societies. And I could easily just go and say, well, you know, they had slavery too. They had their problems as well, just like the Western world. That they're, But people are going to come back at me and just start trying to beat me down, wear me down. And it's, it's when you start taking away people's freedoms to speak and think for themselves, to be themselves, that you start getting issues like this. We start having to have rallies for free speech. Uh, let's see here. Just to continue on with the Portland rally information, you might find this uh, article from the Olympian a little bit funny. All right. This is a stock file from, or this is a file from July 30th. File photo, Joey Gibson left. Leader of the Patriot Prayer heads group rally in Portland, Oregon, et cetera, et cetera. The headline, some arrested as right wing, and I'm doing the air quotes here, right wing rally and counter protesters clash. Okay, this is the narrative I am talking about with the news media. This is the narrative that I have a hard time dealing with. It is not right wing entirely. There are people who are probably a part of the Patriot Prayer that are just as liberal and left-leaning as me. But for the simple fact that you are attacking their rights their ability to have freedom of speech, their ability to use their Second Amendment, etc., is one of the biggest one of the biggest reasons why you have the the, the attacks that you're having against the um, against the left at, in cities like Portland these days. This ultra again is the picture used here for the Oregonian via AP Mark Graves, etc. Blah blah blah. Is they're calling Portland an ultra liberal city, they might as well just call it a progressive city. Just be done with it. It's not ultra liberal, it's progressive, it's socialist. They want what all socialists want collectivism. You and I are the same on every level. And the only way to get that way is to categorize us and identify us into subgroups upon subgroup upon subgroup. And what's the point of that? What is the absolute point of it? I don't know. Uh, Port and this was updated uh, about 17 minutes ago. 
Small scuffles broke out Saturday as police in Portland, Oregon deployed flash, quote, flash ping, end quote, devices. Really? You got a quote, unquote, that. Wow. And other means to disperse hundreds of right-wing and self-described anti-fascist protesters. I mean, wow. Absolutely wow. Right-wing protesters. Again, anything right of progressive is right-wing, I guess. I mean, I don't... I don't know. I might actually have to go on here and do my political compass test live for you guys or record myself doing it one of these days um, just to show you what I mean because, yeah. Um, yeah. Just before 2 p.m., a police in rank here ordered people to leave the area downtown, saying demonstrators had thrown rocks or bottles at officers. Quote, get out of the streets, end quote, police announced via loudspeaker. There were arrests and some injuries, but it wasn't immediately clear how many. A reporter for the Oregonian slash OregonLive.com was bloodied when he was struck by a projectile. Ader Campuzano said later on his Twitter he was okay. Demonstrators aligned with the Patriot Prayer and affiliate group The Proud Boys gathered around midday in the riverfront. Hundreds of demonstrators faced them from across the street holding banners inside with opposition messages such as alt-right scum are not welcome in Portland and some chanting Nazis go home. Again, these messages would have more weight to them if you didn't throw the words around specifically that word i mean honestly why why on earth why on earth are we are is it okay for you to use words like nazis racist fascist etc to the point where they have no meaning okay but when we try to discuss something intelligently with you, when we try to discuss things with you, you can't sit down and have a conversation. That's what I want to know. Officers stood in the middle of a four-lane boulevard, essentially forming a wall to keep the two sides separated. The counter-protesters were made up of a coalition of labor unions, immigrant rights activists, democratic socialists, and other groups. They included people dressed as clowns, and brass band blaring music. The rally organized by Patriot Prayer leader Joey Gibson was the third to Royal Portland this summer. Two, brevi- two previous events ended in bloody fistfights and riots, and one counter-protester was sent to the hospital with a skull fracture. This time, Gibson changed the venue from a federal plaza out changed the venue from a federal plaza outside the U.S. District Court to the waterfront park to some of his Oregon Oregon supporters so some of his Oregon supporters could carry concealed weapons as they demonstrate. What better way to quell Antifa than to be able to bring your own concealed weapons? You know, and I bet you almost every single one of the supporters that could carry concealed weapons were doing it legally. Oh, but that's hate. Gibson disputed the group's classification by some as a hate group. We are here to promote freedom in God. That's it. Portland told, or Gibson told Portland TV station KGW while walking with demonstrators. Our country is getting soft. Protesters saw a significant police presence that included bomb sniffing dogs and weapons screening checkpoints. In a statement, police said weapons may be seized if there is a violation of the law and added that it is illegal in Portland to carry a loaded firearm in public unless a person has a valid Oregon concealed handgun license. Among things people conf- police confiscated were long sticks and homemade shields. Gibson insistence on bringing his supporters repeatedly to this blue city has crystallized a debate about the limits of free, free speech in an era 
of sparking political division. Olympia, AP, you guys are just as guilty of this as anybody else. Patriot Prayer also held rallies in many other cities around the U.S. West, including Berkeley, California, that have drawn violent reactions. But the Portland events have taken on an outsized significance after Patriot Prayer sympathizers were charged with fatally stabbing two men who came to the defense of two young black women, one in a hajib, who the attackers were accused of harassing on the light rail train in May, May 2017. Now, if I remember that correctly, give me just a second, folks. I'm going to look up something here. All right. Two killed in Portland while trying to while trying to stop anti-Muslim rant. All right. Let's go back here and share my screen again. Okay. Or Oregon man accused of screaming anti-Muslim insults at two women and then fatally stabbing two men and wounding, wounding a third as they tried to intervene Friday I had a, had a history of making extremist remarks according to the police and civil rights advocacy organizations. Excuse me. Jeremy Joseph Christian, 35, of North Portland, Oregon, had been booked into Moulton and kind of jail. And let's see, do they even talk about his identifying of any groups? Ah, uh, from reviewing the suspect's Facebook page, it seems that he's very enthralled with alt-right and Nazi movements. The, the two men that were slain really sacrificed everything. They stood. They really stood up for the values of the Constitution. I'm trying to see if they actually discuss, see if they actually talk about Patriot Prayer. Huh. Hmm. Doesn't say that. Well, yeah. You know. That was the New York Times. They might not have it. Maybe Fox News. No, da, 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 da. Let's see here, folks. I know that's kind of sickening. I just saw that. All right. <laughs> really, Fox News? Really? Can a man just scroll through your page? and not be inundated. Let's see. No, no, and still, nothing about Patriot Prayer. It, well, let's go here. I'll even do a live Bing search here, because I use Bing. I just don't like Google search engine very much. Let's go with, oh, right there. Let's see. Wikipedia says far right group right there. Their Facebook page, look at Patriot Pair founder and its founder. Da, da, da. Oh, the SPL, the SPL Center dot org. Hate watch. Mm-hmm. Far right. 
LJ, LJ, okay. Well, let's see here. Federally recognized eight groups. Oh, hey, hate crimes. Hmm. Nope, that doesn't help me. And what I'm looking for... No, white hate groups. Let's go. Disclaimer. Freedom of Information Acts. PDFs. I'm not going to go digging through each one of those. Oh, I know who the Southern Poverty Law Center will have. And I'm sure they have them. All right. Well, let's see here. Let's check out the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate groups. <laughs> now, mind you, these are all what the Southern Poverty Law Center, a not for pro a nonprofit or not for profit, don't remember specifically claims to be hate groups. Some of them I will... What the... <laughs> the American College of Pediatrics is a, a designated hate group by the, Ameri by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Okay. Well, it's. I'm, I believe I've read into some studies where there is some pedophilia and homosexuality. And I actually know a, a, a lesbian couple that do adopt children, and I have more power to them. But I don't know that necessarily that, that, that you could call this a hate group. Uh, American Freedom Party. Yeah, I, I would agree with that one. Obviously, the Aryan Brotherhood is Aryan Nations. <laughs> Let's scroll down. I'm sure. I'm sure it is here. Let's see. Proud Boys. Oh, but notice what's missing. Notice what is missing here. The Patriot Prayer is not in the section. Well, let's go check extremists. The point I'm trying the point I'm trying to get at here, people. To Alex Jones. All right. All right. I'm just trying to find one specific person. Let's see if he's in there. I know Dave, if you weren't paying attention, David Duke did scroll by there. Sorry, the name popped out at me. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's odd. That's odd. Uh, what's his name? Gibson wasn't in there. Joe Gibson wasn't in there. Hmm. Okay. 
Not that I saw. Okay. Now, you'll see here, right down here, Gibson, who's running who's running a long shot campaign to unseat Democrat Senator Maria Cantwell from of Washington, said in a live video on Facebook earlier this week that he won't stop bringing his fellow his followers to Portland until they can express their right wing views. Again, I don't have a problem with them being right wingers. I don't even have a problem with them being labeled right wing when they are right wing. I have an issue when they're blanket. When people are bl when people blanketly call a group right wing because they're opposed to the left, so the progressive left side of politics. Self described anti fascists or antifa have been organizing anonymously online to confront Patriot Prayer and the Proud Boys in the street. Organizers said while Patriot Prayer denies being a white supremacist group. It affiliates itself with known white supremacists, white nationalists, and neo-Nazi gangs. Patriot prayers continue to commit violence in our city, and their events are becoming more and more violent, said Effie Baum of Pop Mob, a coalition of community groups organized to counter-demonstrate. Quote, leaving them, leaving them a small group to attack in the streets is only going to allow them to, per to perpetuate their violence, end quote. If I remember correctly, any time that there's been violence, there's been counter-protests, and the counter-protesters are just as guilty of causing violence as well. It, When you get into large groups like this, all it takes is one person from either side or even an innocent bystander to do something that one perceives as an attack on the other, and it's over. It's gone. It just escalates into a brawl at that point. I mean, going back to the Boston Massacre, as far as we know, from what we can get from the historical records, it was as, it was an accidental discharge, if I remember correctly. Let me go look that up really quick. Spark of Boston Massacre. I spoke that right. Oh, I hate to use history.com. Oh, let's see what the Spark Notes tell me about it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not what I'm looking for. Boston Mascar. All right, the troop deployments. One protesting will clash with British regulars, resulting in the death of five Bostonians. Although most historians actually blame the rock throwing mob for picking the fight, Americans thought the, throughout the colonies quickly dubbed the event the Boston Massacre. Now they don't discuss the actual event that I'm looking for. Okay, history, don't fail me now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I already get, I already get the daily emails. Oh, <laughs> it began as a street ball between American colonists and a lone British soldier, but quickly escalated into a chaotic bloody slaughter. Uh, da, da, da. Ad go away. No, no, no. Give me just a second here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading and I like to think as I'm reading. All right. All right, so here's here's what I was remembering. Reports differ on exactly what happened, but next, but after someone supposedly said the word fired, 
a shoulder a soldier fired his gun although it is unclear if the discharge was intentional that's what i was getting at and that's what that is really what is at stake here that is what people don't understand about large mobs especially when you have opposing sides in this manner it is one of the it is one of the worst things um, that people can do. Hey, resist the flat earth. How's it going? I have no problem with protests, counter protests, but both parties, both sides need to have some sort of formal organization to be held responsible for the actions of the of the crowd. I'm not saying one person. What I'm saying is a group as a whole. What I'm saying is that we need to be accountable for our own actions. And if we are arrested for those actions, we need to be accountable. If you have a group like Antifa that are, for lack of a better phrase, cowards, they refuse to show themselves because they're afraid of the responsibility that they have for their actions. They need then we need to have somebody on their on their side own up to that. And it shouldn't be the city or the state being responsible for their being responsible for paying for these damages to people's property, people's businesses, cars, etc. Ultimately, when it comes to free speech, like I said before, it is either an all or nothing thing. It is the it is the purpose of us to have the discourse for us to be able to discuss a topic i mean many of you know i like to watch videos about the flat earth specifically those that make fun of flat earthers it's it's funny but we don't sit there as a community and say we need flat earthers need to stop making videos flat earthers need to stop spreading need to stop spreading their lies, so to speak. We just sit there and tell them, here's why you're wrong, and they just disregard us. Point, counterpoint. That's all it is. That's the way it needs to happen in the political realm of things as well. That's the way we need to have it in society. But are we going to get that way? Not anytime soon if we keep having protests counter protests like they do in portland like they do down in berkeley i have no problem with people who protest i don't even have people taking the protests over the election i don't have people to have a problem with people taking protests but be smart about it it's not just your right to protest that that's available you have other people's right to go about their lives their daily lives you have the right the people have the right to do what they want to do I mean, I don't agree with people burning the U.S. flag. I don't agree with the NFL players kneeling. But I will support them. I will support all of them in doing so. I see people stomping on the flag. I just walk right on by. And I have friends that ask me, how can you stand there and, and let them do that to something that you defended? And it's because I defended their right to do that. I defended their right of freedom of speech to to desecrate the flag that many of my brothers and sisters in arms have come back draped over their coffin. I have defended their right. I have defended the NFL players' right to do what they want to do on the field. It does not mean that their employers don't have the right to do what they want to do with the players on the field or lack of having the players on the field. That's fine. I know that the players have not always been on the field at all the time. I, I get that. I've been to enough Seahawks games before and after the payoff by the Department of Defense, but still. All in all, when it comes to politics, when it comes to the core beliefs that help us have our political opinions, is the right to freedom of speech, is the right to peaceably assemble. Again, peaceably assemble as soon as that piece is broken your rights to protest are over as a matter of fact let me pull up one other thing here while i have some time 
Oh, here we go. One last thing. Constitution.net. It's not the best, but it does have what I need. And Congress, that is to say the state, shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right to, of people to peaceably to assemble. Peaceably assemble. Once you get rid of that, peaceably assemble. Once you get remove this word, it is no longer the right of the people. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that the counter protest that comes to disrupt your that comes to disrupt and cause violence to not peaceably protest should be able to take away your right as well at the same time. And that you definitely have the right to defend yourself. But keep in mind that don't go to these protests looking for a fight. If you go to the protests looking for a fight, as far as I'm concerned, you are not acting on your freedom of speech. You're not acting on the, the right to assemble peaceably. You are there to be a criminal. You are there to be deviant. And that is BS. So, honestly, I really hope that I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you are, um, how do I put it? I really hope that you've enjoyed listening to this today, and I look forward to doing some more of these with you guys. Um, I hope you also enjoyed the Thoughts by Jay segments that I did this week. Um, just quick topics that I saw that I didn't want to wait till this week to discuss, um, especially the the Chink Uger thing from the Young Turks the other morning. That just, that was just ironically stupid in my opinion. Not getting context right, but it is what it is. I hope that you guys are... Um, have a good weekend. Hopefully it's not too hot. And this has been Jay for Jay's Politics Podcast. Part of the Podcast 99 Internet Radio Network. You can reach us at podcast99.org or me directly at jpoliticspodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter at jpoly with an I podcast. Have a good rest of your weekend.